It is at time for 30. Call the New Bern Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Can we have a roll call, please, Stephanie? Commissioner Bengal. Here. Commissioner Blackman. She um, let me know that she wouldn't be here this afternoon. She had an appointment with her son. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hall. Here. Commissioner Outlaw. Here. Commissioner Powell. He wouldn't be able to make it. Um, Commissioner yeah. Reddick. Here. Commissioner Scott. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, Ms. Askey, did anybody um, register for um, public comments? Uh, no, sir. All right. This time uh, we're probably going to review. We'll take a look at the minutes and um, see if anything need to be addressed within there, uh, change whatever need to be noted. On the packet that I sent out to you all, there were two corrections that I had to make. One was um, the cover sheet for the minutes said March, and it should have been May. And then on one of the resolutions, when we get to it, there was a word, just one word change. What is the, oh no, never mind. I'll ask it later. I'm happy to make the motion to adopt the minutes as stated. I'm happy to second. All in favor, any, any more questions or comments about this? All in favor of approving the minutes as, as stated, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, like sign. The minutes have been approved as stated. Um, finance report. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We'll start with the total operating revenue for Trick Court. It's $322,536.17. Newburn Towers, $445,051.56. Go down to the operating expense for Trent Court, $471,650.88. For CHI, $20,533.20. For the Ross Grant, $30,204.31. And for Newburn Towers, $349,977.75. Down to the bottom, the total net income for Trent Court is $451,396.29. The administrative cost is zero. CHI business activity, negative $20,533.20. And for the Ross Grant, negative $30,204.31. For Newburn Towers, $95,073.30. The um, the Ross grant, is that the total for the first six months of the year? As of May 31st. Yeah. So there have been no drawdowns. We uh, are working on that. It's a permission staying with HUD. Right. Uh, I remember. I, I, was just, I just wanted to know in public. Yes. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to get that Of course. And get them out of the name. Thank you for working on that. Thank you. Any more questions or comment about the uh, finance report? I make a motion to accept the finances as presented. A second. All in favor of approving the uh, finance report as stated? Take five by saying aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, like sign. Finance report has been approved. Uh, executive director report. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, first, let me start off by um, saying that um, myself, Mr. Barner, and Fred Ford from Starkner Architect, we met with um, the local um, Historic Preservation Commission on June the 7th. I um, was talking to them about the demolition at the Trent Court property, and they are all excited about it, and they um, you know, are willing to work with us and to approve our application, which we'll, we'll need to submit to them. The only thing that they may address with us is the possibility of keeping one of the buildings on the property. Um, you know, during their discussion, of course, they can't um, state 
whether they want to keep one or not until we actually submit an application, but that may be um, something that they may require us to do. We're not really sure at this point. And if we have to keep one, it's going to be um, one of the buildings in the flood zone, not one of the buildings in the area where we can actually build apartments and um, develop. And I see the look on your face. And I well, I, I mean, I've always heard we were going to keep one, but I never thought it'd be one in the flood area. I know. I believe the plan calls for us to keep one in the flood zone so that it can be used as a, a pavilion or something public. Yeah, space. just yeah, a public space. And also because if we keep one in the area that we're going to redevelop, that takes away from what we can actually do there. Right. Like That'd we can do so place. much more there without having uh, one of those buildings that we're not going to use for anything at all. Can they, can they legally, though, restrict you from doing that? I mean, make you keep a building? Yes, ma'am. From what, what they're telling me now, if, if you can, I, I, I got to think about that, that one. But so, from, and and that is your meeting with SHPO, not the local. The local. The local. The local. The local. Yeah, they were not SHPO. The local. Are you, in, are you in design review with them? Um, that, they're getting ready to, to present see. to design review. Yes. Okay. So you're in consultation. With right. Them. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so I, that's when they can either say yay or nay. Right. Um, mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Scott has been in meetings with us where that building was going back and forth. Okay. So this is the Historic Preservation Commission. Commission, the local commission. commission. Yeah. I'm going to pull the Shippo. guidelines. If SHPO... You cannot force you to keep a building. You don't want it. Right. Then, yeah. then the local should not be able to. That's well, usually what, what the guidelines. Where I'll pull them. What are you going to do with the building? What's it's, where, are you going to just warm it up? Or is it, yeah. oh. we'll secure it so that it looks pretty, but we're not going to use it for anything at all. I, mean, I thought I way. thought originally Reggie had talked about maybe raising it up and, and taking down the walls and using it as like a pavilion for a park or something. That's a possibility. So we could upfit it so that at least it has public use uh, as opposed to just sitting there as, as a dormant building. Because I think, I, even historically speaking, I think that... Uh, a boarded up building sitting there is pretty useless and, and nonsensical. So, but even if you raise it, it really takes away from the original intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the historic nature of it to me, you know, it's the, uh, I think, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go back because I've got, I've worked with HPC for years that a storyboard put there with pictures of what it was, how it was, yeah. explaining the history of it with a medallion maybe at the base of it could be just as good. I think those are all yes, suggestions. talked about with yes. him as an option. It's a storyboard. Mm -hmm. It was like two people on that board. They just weren't buying anything. They didn't want to the building Yeah, I, and I, I, I don't think not, that's, that's just, just like them you. saying that you can't tear a building down, but you can. After 365 days, right. you can't tear it down. Well, the beautiful thing about a commission is all you need is a majority vote. Right. So we'll work towards yes. that. and I'll help yeah. on that one. Absolutely. I mean, it's... Um, Puzzling to me, the code enforcement requirements, if you have uh, uh, to keep that building, have a roof, pointing up more uh, things like that. Structural soundness, safety, sanitary conditions, time you hit that 50%. Then when you do it, you gotta, you've got to you got to code enforce it to today's standards, which could include freeboarding. And so I, I find it puzzling that maybe HPCs, maybe not, yeah, it might be some Maybe they need a little bit. personal wishes yeah. versus legal well, wishes. This is real, all real, real quick. Um, I'm sorry, I interrupted no, you. Okay. I apologize. The Charles Taylor building wouldn't count as because uh, because we, according to the plan, we're going to renovate that space and use it as the headquarters. That wouldn't count as a historic heap. Um, I think because it's not um, we'll have those the, the medallions in it. We're going to add those to it. Okay. But um, I think because of the year that it was built, like it wasn't built. Gotcha. Um, you know, in forty. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Well, thank you for your work on that, and uh, we look forward to going to design review. Uh, are you going to talk about the FEMA? Yes, that's my name. All right. Okay. Um, so the next thing is to talk about the FEMA meeting that um, we had on June the 13th. Um, and um, FEMA staff has changed again. Um, and they, the new um, FEMA staff decided to join us um, to do introductions um, with us and to talk about where we are in the process. 
And um, one of the major things that I had talked to you all about last month was the demolition plans, um, which are complete and have been submitted into the FEMA portal. Um, those documents are rather lengthy. And um, since the staff are new to looking at this project, it may take them a little bit more time than it would somebody that's been on with us for some time. And that's one of the things that they did um, share with us in the call, um, that they do have those plans and um, they are um, in review of those plans. Um, and we actually got them to them early. Um, they were expecting to get them in the next couple of months. And, you know, we got them to them um, the first of this month. So I'm happy about being able to give them something to look at early. Um, also, um, FEMA and HUD have been meeting um, to discuss um, the environmental assessment, and they're trying to decide on who's going to be the lead agency, which we've been pushing for for some time now for someone to step up and say that um, they're going to be the lead. Once they determine that, um, we'll know the process for the EA, um, whether we'll have to have two done or whether we'll be able to have one, because they're talking about doing an agreement to only accept one. And that way we won't have to have um, the city finish doing um, their review and also FEMA doing a review because both of them require an environmental assessment. Okay. So the, the MOU or the agreement that we had with the city, wasn't that for the environmental assessment as the lead agency? No, not as the lead agency. So what that was, okay. I didn't, it's so many steps. To this. Uh, uh, so what that was, I was told at one point we needed to have that agreement so that the city could complete the environmental assessment on behalf of HUD, not FEMA. This is for HUD. So once we got started with that, because this is a historical site, we needed to do the MOU between the agency, the city, and the state historical. Um, Shipper. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we did that, and for several months, SHPO put me on hold saying they needed to review it, and when they did review it, they came back to us and put me in tears to tell me that we don't need it. She told me that we would need a programmatic agreement with FEMA because we were going to use FEMA funds, right? So from that point... Um, Shippo and FEMA were supposed to discuss the approval of um, us moving forward with an environmental assessment, which hasn't happened to this point, which is why we brought in um, asking a request for HUD and FEMA to talk about the EA assessment so that we could get moving forward. Well, on all that, we knocked 42 units down in Craven Terrace. And that's an HPC, or you wouldn't ever got your. It was not an HPC. Well, but, but it was they, considered a historic, they, a right, historic okay. site, different, two different things. So that's well, the difference. Okay. They did also, not have to go for review. But my question would be is we hired a FEMA consultant. Shouldn't they be running all this interference for you? <laughs> yeah. and, and Valerie is doing so, so well. Uh, uh, we're sitting in on the call. She yeah. was running. I'm saying taking this all for you and yeah. put it on the consultant. And, and she speaks the language and everything that, that all of the agencies. And I mean, my eyes got crossed and I was not watching the meeting. I was listening to it. Like, uh, but all of the all of the organizations involved, all the groups involved, she's uh, Valerie's gotten all the information to them uh, ahead of schedule. Uh, so everything that we can possibly be doing as an organization has been done, and really we are uh, relying on the mercy of the infrastructure of disaster and HUD and, and public housing in, in trying to work it out. What I am happy about is it has been broken down into three separate phases. Um, and so they are dealing with uh, each different phase individually, uh, which had which wasn't done a few months ago. They they were trying to eat the elephant at every at every meeting. And 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 so I feel it as though Valerie's pushing uh, pushing the, the cart forward and, and we'll see demolition uh, sooner rather than later. Just, you know, maybe even for you at some point, I'd really urge you to um, talk to Bobby Astor. He is just an unbelievable whiz at this whole process. FEMA inside, and he's dealt with historic stuff. Everything in the city has been driven by Bobby. 
through a consultant, but he may be able even to enlighten, I, even though Valerie knows it, sometimes it's, he's a good education piece. I can't stress enough how important he was to the city. Yeah, we, uh, Bobby and I have talked and, yeah, and I'll continue to talk to him, but what, what I love about Valerie uh, is she seems to know not just the FEMA side of things, but also how to navigate the public housing side of things. Awesome. And as uh, as Amelia said so eloquently uh, <laughs> in our finance meeting tonight, uh, housing is its own it is its own bear. So we're really wrestling a lion and a bear called FEMA and HUD. Uh, and you know Tiffany's stuck in the middle, and she's doing a great job holding up. So uh, kudos and uh, my uh, my. Uh, sincere felt gratitude and, uh, and appreciation for the work that you're doing. Yeah. Um, so, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about tonight, and again, please, I ask for you all's cooperation. I am trying my best to schedule the training for you, and it's really hard to get you all together outside of this day. <laughs> so, um, and, and, Commissioner Outlaw, he's the only one who says I'll come anytime, and I appreciate that. And he responds so fast. <laughs> I'm talking two days, aren't you? Two days, yeah. Right. I'm talking two full days, two full um, eight hour days. And um, I have um, moved it to August if we can get August settled. And um, I have August the 7th, the 8th, August the 9th, the 10th, August the 14th, the 15th, and August the 16th and the 17th. And I've had um, Two commissioners outside of uh, Commissioner Outlaw to respond, um, which was on two different days. Yeah. It was the 14th and the 15th and the 16th. And okay, the 17th. I, I never got the one with the August dates. Mm -mm. Okay, that's why okay. I had that question. So I can tell you right now, I would be available the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. Those are the two. You can. Yes, okay. those uh, in August. The first two you gave in August, I'm not available. Okay. Well, so far, those are the only two um, that I've had people respond to that can. The later dates? Mm -hmm. The later dates. And I prefer the 16th and the 17th. I know I put 14th, 15th. I, I put that week, but just I prefer the 16th and the 17th. It would be great if everyone else can prefer the 16th and the 17th. <laughs> I, can, I can definitely do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the pressure is on. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do the 16th and the 17th, except the 16th, I will be, I will not be able to be present until 9 a.m. I don't know what the schedule will be. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know what the schedule, the, the hour schedule will be, but I, I won't be able to be present physically until 9 a.m. But I'll, I'll call in ahead of time if, if that's necessary. Okay. Well, I'm left with no choice. <laughs> I'm the team player. <laughs> So 16 and 17 it is. Yay. Thank you all so much. That was one thing we that was easy to be. <laughs> one day on the schedule we are on right now. And that's one of those days, but you know, I'll take a sacrifice. I'll take one for the team. You're the boss. <laughs> but yeah, I got it. 16. That's all I have. Thank you for that. And um uh, you know, with this FEMA and and uh, uh, you explained that to me the other day, I left out here with a headache. So mm. thank you for what y'all what are dealing with. I'm glad you were on the phone to, on, on with it to, uh, to help console her after the fact or whatever she did. That's about all the help I was. <laughs> but thank you, Ms. Askew. Um, at this time, we have... Uh, Can you ask a question? Yes, please. I just, uh, just in some of my notes, Revised MOU, Jamie, where are we at with that? You know, are we from the last yeah, time? Laurel, Laurel, Laurel Street. Laurel, Laurel Street. Street, I'm sorry. They have not uh, responded back to us yet. They have not. Okay. No. I just. But uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I did touch base. But no. it, it, okay. It Is that a problem for us? So will that hold us up in any way? Uh, no, it depends on what they decide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if they say we're just, it's just taking us a long time and it's fine, then no. Okay. If they want to rewrite it, then yeah, maybe. Okay, I just wanted an update on that. Okay, I was thank also, you. I was also going to ask, Mr. Chairperson, um, would this be an appropriate time uh, to uh, commend Ms. Askew on finishing her executive director training? Yeah, 
we want to commend you on finishing your executive director training. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a two year long process, uh, 18 month process. And I know it was a lot of travel and uh, the, the benefit that it will bring the organization is really appreciated. And so we, we anticipate having representation there to cheer you on when you walk across the stage mm -hmm. next year. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. So that is, is it awarded at the convention each year at the annual? Yeah, That's when it's yeah, awarded. Yeah. But do you still get the status of it? Um, and or not until then? Because that's a sick you have to wait six Te months. <laughs> Technically not until then. Like okay. they um it's through Rutgers University and they give right. you a um a diploma. A diploma. Yeah. 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 Nice. Awesome. Like a big the one we witnessed was yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And do we know when that Thing is it's in January usually. It is. Um, I know where it's at, so we can plan it. ahead. Like yeah. right after. If you will send it out to us, at least we can get it on our calendar. Maybe start yeah. preparing it for those of us that want to attend. What city is it in this year? Um, San Diego. San Diego, and we get to stand up and shout and hoop and holler and and, and make a new burn ruckus. Uh, uh, the last time I was in San Diego, <laughs> last time I was in San Diego at a convention, they had an earth tremor. It was the first time I've ever felt it. <laughs> I was in the chair and just happened to look up and I could see the chandelier go like mm -hmm. this. And then the chair went boom, boom, boom. And you, I froze. I mean, but that was it. Then there was nothing else, but woo, scariest thing. I don't we know. Were, if we will petition the most high that it would not Yes, please. Like yeah. You know, I'll petition the most high right then. Yes. Um, yeah, but congratulations on that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's very competitive. It was just, yeah, it's good. It's good. And it just represents a lot of extra work outside of the normal uh, the normal call of duty. And so kudos. Uh, I also wonder if this would be an appropriate time to talk about uh, Juneteenth and interchain, yes. uh, interchain di discussion uh, about the future of that. Actually, you can do it. Well, I when I came in today, I did ask while we were at work, because I know it's a federal holiday and HUD is a federal agency. And then she said, then Ms. Askew said, was because we never voted on it, but I didn't know. So here is your schedule. You have 12 holidays. I think what we need to discuss is, do we want to make it 13 holidays? I don't know if HUD allows that. Or, um, or we make it, the city of New Bern, just using that as an example, has made it a flex holiday. So what happens is they still have 12 holidays and you can take Juneteenth as a paid holiday in exchange for something else. So we can, you can look at that. We can, however you want to do it. But right now we have, um, well, this for 2023, it'll be a little different for 2024, but uh, we had Monday, January 2nd, because we had a, mm -hmm. a Sunday was January 1st. So we'll always have January 1st, uh, Martin Luther King Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, two days at Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve. So that the day before New Year's. So again, uh, I guess that would be discussion for the board to decide what you would want to do going forward. Well, how much does it cost? I mean, first thing we need to know is how much does it cost to have a holiday? I don't know what it, we, we can thing. get that to you all. Yeah. This is kind of like a last minute thing, but if you want to wait till next month, I mean, that's fine because it's passed now and yeah. it's not going to impact yeah. us. Yeah. Um, it, is the normal procedure, I know again, and I'm sorry that I use the city as an example, it's just yeah. my frame of reference, but every year we approve the calendar for the following year. So usually like September, is it? September, October, we get a, a list of holidays and we say, okay, we approve this for the next calendar year. And maybe we should do something like that so we could deem it appropriate and get the I, I information. Think so. I think so. That's what we do in the ministry. September, yeah. October, we just forecast the next year. Right. Do you guys run on a fiscal year or, or an annual year? Fiscal. No, calendar. Oh, no. January 1. To but that's December. our fiscal year. Like some houses are okay. in in June, some in yeah. in September, but I was just happened to be You're, the Yeah, you the call it calendar year, yeah. fiscal year. Yeah, gotcha. I was just happened to be the actual fiscal, right. I mean, the actual calendar year. Okay. So, I mean, maybe it's just an agenda item for September or October for us just to uh, have a list of potential holidays. Uh, presented so, yeah, so we could see what 24 looks like yeah. because sometimes depending on when the holiday falls yeah. if it's on a Sunday you have to take 
the Friday or the Monday or something like that. So I think that would be appropriate to look at the calendar for 24 and then based on that. But um, uh, I September is the month you want it. Yeah, I think that would be fine. I I just didn't know if HUD was mandated by federal rules. So because it is a federal agency, and they they have deemed Juneteenth a federal holiday. I was not sure how that was handled. They haven't done that yet, but if you want to recommend it to them. <laughs> Surprisingly, they have not recommended yeah, I'm, that much, but... Well, at the very least, I just want to recognize Juneteenth and wish everybody a very happy Juneteenth. Thank you for the color. Uh, and, Beautiful. <laughs> so that's all. That's good. That's all I have. Thank Thank you. Any more questions or concerns for the executive director? Uh, that we, uh, we will have the uh, report from Ms. Simmons from New Bern Towers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The option rate for option for the Bern Towers if uh, total units 106 units occupied 101, uh, option rate 95%. Total vacancy uh, units, vacant unit is filed. One bedrooms, three, two bedrooms, two. Move-ins, three, move-outs, two. Zero transfers, approved, five. In process, 15. Gosh, you can yell at me, honey. I can't get the, can, the numbers don't make, don't, don't add up again. So, so if you have, if you had three people move in, Three units move in. So let's say um, last month your units were, or let's just say 100 and, 101, or you're saying you had occupied. Three move in, two move out. So I, I couldn't get that to add up, let's see, from last month. Last month you had 100. So three moved in. Right. Mm -hmm. And two moved out. That was 103 to 101. Okay. I was taking it from the 101 and three move in. That would have made it 104. Two move out would have been 102. But you take it from the month before, correct? And that's how you got that. All right. <laughs> <I'm on it. laughs> Look, we spent two hours going. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. And there were no transfers. And I appreciate it. Exactly. And the transfers are great. Uh -huh. And the number of yes, bedrooms. Yes. Yes. That, is, that is so helpful because, yeah. yes, Good thank job. you. I appreciate that. I know we aggravated the living snot out of you, but I just... well, well, it had us to look very closely. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank well, you. This, this is a question I got for five projects. Um, you know, in city government, at any given time, you might have an average fund balance of 40%. When all the taxes start coming in after September, you have 50%. You might have 60%. When all the bills start getting paid, you don't have any money coming in with exception of sales tax. It might be 28%. Can I knock on the door of 106 units and 101 of them will have an occupant? I know that 15 up there. My question is, generally speaking, do we in fact have that? The 15 in perfect good while, I understand, there's 101 units occupied. Now, if I knock on the door, would 101 people this afternoon be in those units? Or is what I don't understand is the the 15 in process. That's application. Oh, that means application. But I mean, are you in any way like some of them might be uh, 24 hours from being approved? Some of them might be 24 days from being approved. What? But it doesn't what, matter. If you get definitely? approved, they go on a list and then it moves up. Uh, you know, so, so I mean, started. tomorrow would, would it be, could that change? I'm just trying to get an idea. Is, is the 95% uh, an that ninety five doesn't have anything to do with those applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have anything. I mean, All fifteen of those people may not be approved. Yeah, right. and, and then we try to make sure we have people ready to go in there as soon as we can, so that we don't have units, um, you know, unoccupied for you know months. So we try to stay ahead, and that's and that's the process that we go through. At that makes sense. Yeah. Well, also, to your question, Commissioner, mm -hmm. if you were to knock, uh, if you were to knock on the door tomorrow. 
Uh, this report is as of the 30th of last month. So this is a reporting on last month. And so if you were to knock on the 30th of last month, those numbers would be accurate. Is, is that correct? Is that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The total account receivable charge $32,337.14. Received $31,910.83. But unpaid $425. Chair 97%. Year to date unpaid balance $3,678.40. Non payments five zero criminal activity other violation zero work orders outstanding request two one um last month is put up there from last month and the request received 21 completed 20 pending repair zero pending parts two and the ACU. Can you go back up? On, I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Did Did you have pending evictions up there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Or termination. I have like the word eviction, but hey, termination. I apologize. Yeah. Five. Five. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How long do you let the non-payment go for? I mean, is it not? They become pending terminations at what after? 60 days of not paying or 90 days, or is it 30 days? Or how does that, how does that work? When does it get into that category? Okay. Okay. No, go ahead. You, you speak it. Yeah, 30 days. 30 days. 30 days. You'll be trying to work with them though. Yeah, I, I would assume you would. Yeah, they'll come in and they might say that we have, um. RCS or some program is paying for them and they get a um a pledge letter, a uh -huh, right. pledge letter. So we try to work with them before we do that's I was thinking it would be at least 60 or 90 days yeah. past when they were supposed to pay. And then they would go on that list, but prior to that, they wouldn't be on that list. Okay. On those HVAC units do I noticed that in the report it says something about some had been stolen. Um that's on the, that's on the flooded units, not not these. But what I'm asking is when something supposedly stolen is a police report made, or is it just the same? I mean, in other words, there's not probably a lot of value there, but does anybody know where those units got off to, or could they, what the salvage value would have been, or yeah, is it not a big deal? Or? Like that. Oh. They actually um, charged the guy who actually stole the unit. So you do know who stolen? Yes, sir. The police report and all that? Yes, sir. Making the application, they sent back to me and had to fill back out. But he has been charged for the units that we actually seen him on camera take. Um, do you have any monetary value on what was stolen? Um, well, five thousand bucks or thousand or it was over a thousand. That's what made it hmm. I just read that. I didn't know how much detail. I, I, I assume that you guys probably filed a police report. Yeah, you know? I, I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Police report total five, fire reports zero. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Any more questions? Question for Miss Simmons. Thank, Thank you, Miss Simmons, and um, oh, wow. Mr. Jones for the input with that. Yes, sir. Next, we'll have Miss Miner from the Trent Court. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, for um, Trent Court, we have 110. The opposite rate is 94%. We have seven vacant units, one, one bedroom, two, two bedrooms, and three, I mean, four, three bedrooms units. We had two move-ins, zero move-outs, one transfer. We have nine approved, three in process, um, for the tenants' accounts receivable, charge is $29,530.51. Received was $19,852.25. Unpaid for the month is 
$78.26. The tar rate is 67%. And the year-to-date unpaid balance is $25,758.27. A non-payment is 22. We had zero criminal and zero other violations. For the work orders, we have zero requests that is outstanding. We received 26. 26 was completed. Zero pending repair and zero pending parts. For the police report is um, 24, and four of those were assists for other agencies. And we had one fire report, which that's the transfer. The one transfer was from the oh, fire. Gotcha. No one was hurt or anything. No. Okay. The year-to-date unpaid balance and those terminated for non-payment, how, how much of, do we know how much of that is going to have to be a write-off? Not at this point. We okay. Um, it's a little bit scary. It's, you know, it reminds me almost COVID. It's almost twenty five percent of the you know got one hundred and ten units. Real one hundred and three, so it's almost twenty five percent pending termination. Yeah. Um, and I know during like COVID, of course, that's what those numbers looked like during COVID. Mm -hmm. Is there? Do we know what is? You know, is there something that we need to help residents with? Is they they don't have jobs? They you know reason for the non payment. Um, I mean, this is a business that we're in. We're in low income housing. And a lot of times other things are more important than rent. Um, and I don't think we can really change that mindset. I wish we could. Um, but no, I, mean, I mean, that's just the what can we do to help? nature of the beast that we have here. And it's always been like that from my 20 plus years. So mm -hmm. the, these ratios don't don't necessarily concern you as an expert in housing. Uh, no, because I mean, it's just something that I mean, we just deal with in our business. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's one of my um, concerns when I got here about not having any resident services. And, and we do have resident services and we, you know, we're out there to try to support the residents that we have, but we just got to get them to be willing to take right. the support that we're trying to give to them. Now, Social Work 101, all you can do is present an, uh, an attractive alternative. Uh, an opportunity, if you will. Can Can I just say one thing? No. Okay. I'm joking. <laughs> Pardon me, but I need to say this. Okay, so it's just like when we say, um, "Resident A, go to RCS, go to Miss Nancy at the Salvation Army, go to Mr. Joe down at Catholic Charities." When the questions be asked. So if you are working, why you did not pay your rent? So sometimes that leads them to get even less because then they feel like as an organization, if I was at RCS, okay, so why are you not paying? And I have to pay all of this to keep you on track when you're going to probably do the same thing again. Yeah. So that's that's all I need to say. So we do, we are concerned about that but it's something that we can't yeah, control. No, I, I, I totally agree. I just didn't, you know, when it was those kind of numbers, that was back during COVID and people just weren't working so they couldn't pay the rent. So I didn't know if it was a, something that said they're just not working or okay, but but still they're choosing to do with their money what they're right. doing. So it's like um you were getting the stimulus, you were getting extra things mm -hmm. other places. <clears throat> so Mm -hmm. All the other stuff is just excuses to me. At this okay. Point. Mm -hmm. I mean, just want to know. Me, me, no, no, but twenty five percent. I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your report, Mr. Jones. Um, yes, sir. On the on the uh, on the work orders received completed. Uh, what kind of turnaround time y'all you be getting with that? Because uh, these are good numbers. It's kind of turnaround um, depending on what the job yeah. is. It's an air conditioning unit. Um, we have to get some outside help, which is school now. I'm trying to move okay. in house. Okay. But usually, emergency, we have to do it within 10, 24 hours. But as soon as we get them, I just try to get them done as fast as we can. Are you still using contractors to put, uh, to turn apartment units? Um, we have, but now we're at the point that we are somewhat caught up. We can do it. Okay. 
And just to share, Mr. Jones does not like to have outstanding work orders, so <laughs> you know, we probably won't have any because it really bothers him. If you, if you it's been a big change. Yeah, you know. yeah no doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. I just don't like it. That's Neither good. do we. Do we have any <laughs> comment? De definitely the residents don't, so that's good. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you, um, Ms. Minor. Welcome. Any more questions or concerns from Ms. Minor? Like you have a response for yes. <laughs> After means, of, can I ask you about, about a something an available space, if you don't mind? Uh, at, Say it again. Uh, available space. I had somebody to contact me about trying to get into Trent Court who couldn't, and you might be able to answer the question. Okay. And you say after? Yeah, after the Okay, meeting. you got to be brief because I have to get to the daycare. Okay, okay. no problem. <laughs> All right. Or you could call, or I'll, work. Yeah. You could call my work is that, phone number. Is that okay? I don't know that I have it, but if I could. 639-1490. Yes, ma'am. I will call you. Tonight. I can drive. I'll put you on speaker. And yes, no problem. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Appreciate that, though. But it is a work number. Not your personal number, it's your work number. I'm a personal number. They didn't have it, they got it now. <laughs> As they should. No. It's your work number. I'm not even worried. worried because half of the family in Well, thank you though, for the report, Ms. Huggins. Next, we'll have a Ross program report, Ms. Huggins. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Participant is 53%, non, non participant is 47%. Case management is ongoing. Training Community College classes, leadership phase one and two is continuous. Partnership opportunity, resource opportunities is still ongoing, and the list is growing. HUD required evidence based needs. Assessment for 65 and older is total seven. There's no changes with that to report. There are two um, personal aids, health and wellness, that's still current, child care services through DSS, still no waiting for full time workers. Credit Community College has a scholarship enrollment program that is still continuous. Mm -hmm. um, there are two um, new programs that um, I was told about through the Mediation Center of Eastern Carolina. They have teen court summer enrollment for volunteers, um, teenagers uh, starting at um, between 15 and 18. They have a peer alternatives for man up and girls empowered. Um, and they can call that number. We've got brochures and they can call the number and contact it. Contact them and the representative will let them know exactly what they need to do to enroll. Transportation, parks, and omnibus schedule is still current. However, they have a new location, 1106 Clarks Road. The services will not change and the schedule will still be on the same. Home ownership class, Habitat for Humanity, the workshop. Um, there's no new, um, new date right now. They're still working on that. Uh, also, um, I have a new class that came open. It's Citizens Police Academy for Trick Court residents mm -hmm. and open to the public. It's a 10 week course, it's available in August. Um, the details will be arranged. However, the class size is 16 and they only have two seats left. Ooh, wow. wow, good job. And um, we had a good turnout for the outreach event, which was May 12, 10 resource partnerships, 30 adults, 20 children. And also there's a financial literacy workshop that's gonna be held at the New Bern Towers in their social room, June 27, between 12 and 2 p.m. Ms. Huggins, are you are, are you the uh, 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 the housing authority representative on the homeless co coalition? Yes, sir. So thank you for attending those meetings. I appreciate the work you all are doing. Thank you. Absolutely.
So that concludes my report. It's, it's, it's so wonderful to hear joy in your presentation, in your voice, and you're doing your presentation yeah. nowadays. Because <laughs> I, I do remember when. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your stuff. <laughs> but, but, but what that says, your, your labor is paying off. You know, you didn't quit. You didn't just get go through the motion. You've been staying at it, staying at it. And we, we appreciate that. You know, we, we appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Do you have any programming uh, with NC Works that, that you're doing currently? Well, at the meeting, um, I was able to um, talk to one of the representatives there. Yeah. Um, so I think it's in Mr. Tony Wanda. Tony Wanda, he actually yes. talked to me about and it. So um, he's, he was trying to tell me how to get connected with the MC360. Yes. So that's something that I'm going to start working, yeah. you know, wars and, you know, learning yeah. that program so I can get better at it. Absolutely. That was going to be my recommendation. And I'm going to have to tell Tony about speaking before me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the work you're doing. Thank you, sir. you you know you all do a lot of work we don't see we appreciate it um, yeah. I know the, I know the, the residents do just keep doing what you're doing and uh and keep working as a team as you're doing but we just appreciate you all I get to see y'all a few times uh during the weekend not during the week but during the month and uh your energy your positivity I just want to thank you all for I don't get to see you the same but y'all <laughs> But thank you all, though, seriously. We appreciate it so much. Thank you very much for what y'all do. Uh, Ms. Askew, a couple of resolutions. Yes, sir. We have two tonight. Um, the first one is um, Mr. Jones um, has a resolution to request um, for um, heat ventilation and air conditioning um, unit disposition. And I'll let him um, talk to you all about that. Good and the other have the approval to um, donate two of the two power stereo units. Units we have on the Bannon, Bannon units, both center. And it's something that, that we could, well, I'm not joking, that we could use to actually work with. Hands on. Yes, sir. Main value at 350 to $400. There are all the units that they're not compatible with the units we're using now. But the other ones I was taking parts of, so all of them proud of people stealing them, but it's something that the school could use. I think that's a great idea. Great idea. And other things that we have that the vote mm -hmm. center could have. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I don't think this really even needs discussion, but I'll make the motion to um, adopt the resolution as stated. I will make a robust second. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Any of any questions or anything? Any questions or comments on that? And, and, and that and that's good, and that's good community work as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's good community work. So thank you all for doing that. All in favor of approving the uh resolution for the HVAC uh, donation to uh Vogue Center, think by by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, I sign. The resolution 6.31 for the HVAC deposition has been approved. The next one, Ms. Askew. Um, just to share, that was Mr. Jones' idea, not mine. And then, well, <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually it is boots on the ground that come up with them kind of recommendations, you know. <laughs> but, but you can't be hands on. You can't, you can't be hands on, particularly mm -hmm. something that, yeah, you just can't be hands on. It's great training. Great training. Thank you for that. Um, the next resolution um, is for um, approval to um, adopt the update of our emission and continuing occupancy policy. And I'll let Ms. Meyer speak to that. Okay, so um, to comply with the HUD regulations, um, they have uh, made changes to the over income. It's on your sheet. Um, I don't think we oh, yeah, I don't know. The sheets are still out there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. Anyone, Dana? Okay, so I want is it just one, is it just one sheet? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's one, one sheet. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this right here is the initial notice. I mean, you receive like three notices, and down to the bottom, as you see, um, the limits has changed. So um 
the it's telling you the the what the guidelines we have to go to. We have to do initial notice, the second notice, and a final notice. And the final notice is 24 consecutive months of being over income. And that way it keeps the person that's just paying the flat rate for that unit, then gives them a time limit to mm -hmm. do it for two years, because sometimes they won't go on, which mm. if you can pay the flat rate, thinking her saying well, give it to someone that cannot. Right. Okay. I um please consider um these changes and please accept thank you. Now, I I'd done a study about oh gosh, it's been maybe five years ago and I asked for the rents didn't tell me what unit it was, it just said this many units were paying 50, this many a hundred. Mm -hmm. And so we we had people within Trent Court at the time, this is pre-flood, mm -hmm. that were paying $800 a month rent, but it was based on their income. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, you, I think it was 20, 21% people paid $500 or more, which is pretty large thing. And there were, you know, we have people who really need units. Now we're less. I think it's important that this is, you know, my, my point is this is really important and we need to do that because it does help people to, to you know, move on and get open up space for people who are really? desperately in need. Um, so I think it's, you know, I endorse this and I think it would be a good thing, but I think it's good to look at those, that data. Yeah. And I'd like to see that again some point. And just, again, it doesn't reveal who's paying what. It just says, you know, we have 10 units paying 50, we have 10 units paying 100 or whatever it is, so we can get an idea of what's out there and it'll help us to understand things in a better manner. Um, just to share with you, since you spoke of that, um, we're working on updating our flat rents, so those rents are going to change and then we will share that information with you okay, so great. that you can see um, who's paying what, um, like you said, and then you're also going to see um, an increase on the rent um, because we'll need to take the Fair market rents for a uh, Craven County and adjust those mm -hmm. based on um, <laughs> based on a percentage so that we can determine what our uh, flat rates mm -hmm. are going to be, and then we'll bring that. We're working on that now. So those rates are not determined by HUD. They are, but we have to do a percentage of that. Like the fair market rent, I'm just throwing this out there, but the fair market rent for a three bedroom could be fifteen hundred. But of course, we're not going to charge fifteen hundred where we are, so we have to do a percentage of that. What is what is it? Ten percent? I think it's like two point four or something like that. Point four or something like that. It's a small amount. Okay, we just have to adjust it to that. So uh, we'll we'll I'll bring it back to you um, to tell you how much they are. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we adopt the resolution as presented. Okay. Second. On approval of accepting the approving the motion updated mission of the occupancy occupancy policy, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Like sign. The approval of the updated mission and continued occupancy policy mm -hmm. has been approved. Good. And that's the final resolution that we have. Any, any questions, any comments on Wayne and one at this time? Good I, job, I, team. I, silence is okay. Just go with <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll entertain a motion for a German. <laughs> I'll approve. Uh, all in favor of adjournment, big by like saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye, sorry. Me and Nancy Jones have heard the bid to discuss. <laughs> Thank you. Again. I thought you were telling everything. Yeah. Hey, um, I am. Do you have five minutes? Yeah, I'm just right here so I can tell you. I have a 